Hi everybody, welcome to a new video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to help uh, support me, there is a donate button in the description. Thank you for the very kind, kind people who have donated to me. It helps me buy art materials so I can continue to carry on with these videos. Now this video is a, the creation of a, it's a bedside lamp actually, I haven't done anything like this before, but the the actual process was inspired by Sue Finlay, who is a very, very creative um, resin artist, and it's, it was inspired by the way she bends her resin, her resin pieces that she does. So this is a resin bedside lamp. The theme of the lamp is a beautiful underwater scene. I hope you enjoy it. Here I'm working on a, a silicon pet mat which you can buy at Kmart or Target and I'm now laying on my resin colours and all these colours are La Res colours. I've used a cinnamon, that's their brownie colour. I've got a cosmic blue, I've got sea breeze, and I've got iridescent jade and angel white. So they're the colours that I'm using. And as you can see, when I have put the colours on, I've also laid some clear resin over the top of it because I want to dilute those colours um, because I want to create some transparency because I want this as a lamp that I'm doing and I want there to be some transparent areas for the light to come through. And see, I'm just pushing pushing the the angel white. The angel white is quite saturated. I've actually put a lot of colour into the resin and it's very uh, stable because there is a lot of resin on, on the surface there so it's mixing in and I'm getting some lacing there. So now what I'm applying here is some paint straight from a spray can this is a spray can paint of paint that I got from Bunnings and I'm putting it directly into the resin just with a paddle pop stick. It moves a lot and sometimes you have to really apply it more than once so that you get more of a saturation of colour. See I'm putting different colours so I've got, I've got reds and orange and yellow spray can and I'm just dropping them in and it creates these really interesting effects in the resin and it really was starting to feel like a reef the floor of the the ocean floor with some beautiful colored uh, reef coral and rocks forming so those background colors were quite deep in tone um, because I knew that this was going to sit on top so these spray paints that I'm dropping in, will act, they actually just sit on the surface. They don't drop in to the resin very far, they just sit on the surface, but they disperse quite a lot. So this is the same, this is yellow, this is a yellow spray paint. And I'm just applying with a, a brush. The brush is no good after this, you can't get the resin out. It was an old brush. Just a paddle pop stick or a um, toothpick is, is great for applying it. Now the resin is, was fairly stiff when I actually started to lay it down so um, you know you could kind of wait for your resin to cure a little bit just you know half an hour before you actually start doing it have it all mixed up and then start going because it it will move less and you still have plenty of time I'm using art resin and um, you have a lot of working time with art resin so here I'm I'm wiping back with just paper towels because I want to create a really nice wave-like shape at the top. That's the top of the of the lamp shape. So I'm just creating the flat profile shape for the lamp, which I will bend when it starts to cure a little. So it's I want to create like a, a watery scene, and that's the wave tops and down as it goes further down the tone is darker and that's the base of the the sea floor 
So I'm getting sort of little shapes like jellyfish and little fish and fish underwater creatures. And, you know, to, to get a little bit more depth, I'll add a bit more blue um, here and then to create some more depth and to maybe outline a kind of a shape to hold hold some shapes in. And sometimes I added a bit of clear resin as well. But it worked out quite well. And it was, you know, sort of hard up against the edge of that mat on one side and wasn't so much on the other because I wanted to have a irregular edge. I didn't want it to be, you know, a, a, just a straight cylinder shape. I wanted it to have a rough edge, a wave-like edge. So it turned out quite well. I was quite, quite pleased with that effect. I didn't use a great deal of resin, which was quite good. It's quite a thin, thin um, layer there. And you know, then I went back because as it starts to cure, you can add more, more highlights. That at the moment I'm using resin. This is resin mixed with angel white, and because it has started to cure a bit, I can now add a bit more. And I know that it's not going to move; it's going to stay where I put it. And you know, I'm adding a little bit more of the spray paint. Now the spray paint, as I said has not been added to any resin, it is straight onto the surface. Straight, I spray it from the can into a container and then I put it on with a paddle pop stick or with a toothpick. So I'm just pulling out some of the colour here and there. Now what I'm doing is applying some really these lovely acrylic diamonds. They're, um, they're just plastic di diamantes I guess you'd call them and they, they use them for scatter decorations for parties and things. Um, but what they do is they, they drop down into the resin and they push, you know, they push the colour away. And so what you get is a transparency. I mean, you can't see the transparency because the, the cat mat is actually uh, grey, which is, is desaturating all the colours. It would be great if it was white, but it's... Um, it does desaturate the colour, so you've got to keep that in mind when you're adding colours to it. But see how the diamantes are dropping in and they're creating some really interesting shapes and they're going to create some clear areas where the light will shine through. So here now I'm setting up the, the, the shapes that I'm going to mould the piece of resin around. So I've just used a big container, I think it was a yoghurt container, and I've got a piece of plastic over the top of it, this is so the resin won't stick. And then I've got some plastic and I'm just pushing it into that plastic cylinder shape just, just so that I can bend it around something. I've actually done a larger one, this is a larger one than I did before, and that was I did that on a that was a pipe I used, but I wanted to do a small one and I couldn't find a smaller pipe, so I just decided to use this. So now now I just pick up the whole the cat mat, the pet mat, and I'm, this is the next day, and I'm sticking it down with some tape, and I'm clipping it at the top with some uh, bulldog clips to hold it in place. This is so that it will create that cylinder shape. And now, this is the next day, and it has cured a bit, and I've pulled it off. And I'm going to put it back onto that shape without the mat behind it. And it's still very soft because it was quite thin. And it's still quite soft and I can still do a lot with it. I can cut it easily with a pair of very sharp scissors. So I'm cutting the edge to make it a nice shape. And, I'm, you know, it's, it's cured enough that I'm, it's not going to leave any fingerprints. But it's still, I'm still able to, to push it around. Now I'm getting some super glue here and I'm putting super glue along the edge where it overlaps and then I put it back onto my mold, molded cylinder and stick it down and make sure the super glue doesn't stick. So I'm just making sure I can get this off. And now I'm applying a little bit of handwork 
um, remembering that wherever I do do any handwork, it's going to be going to block the light. So if you do too much handwork, you'll actually block the effect of the lamp, the lamp. So I just did a little bit. So when I wanted to do a fish, I would just do a, a white shape and go back and then work over the top of it. So I had a nice base to work with uh, because sometimes the resin might resist the paint. And I just picked up some of the shapes that were already there and, and brought them out from the background and added some little like sea urchin shapes and um, little highlights and uh, coral shapes. Just, just very small and sort of delicate shapes. Here I'm doing a little fish. So I'm creating a white silhouette with white paint and then I'll go back and put the colour on that when it's dry. So I, I went over the whole thing and did some little tiny, little tiny details just to give some reality to, to the little reef. Now I'm creating the base. Now the base doesn't have to be resin, it could be uh, wood, it could be some other material, it's just that I decided to do resin. So this is a, a six inch cake, silicon cake container, and this is a really deep pour of resin. So I had to put the resin in a, in a few goes and get the bubbles out as I went so that it um, didn't get too many bubbles because it's quite deep. You probably should do it slowly but this seemed to work okay. And now I'm just swirling the color, same colors that I used in the reef in the base and some white. It's interesting the white really sank to the bottom. It's, it was probably very heavy. I probably put a lot of pigment in it. It sank right to the bottom. So the, the resin actually behaved quite differently uh, being so deep it was interesting and here I did the same thing with the spray paint and I made some little jellyfish which actually kind of almost sank down I, because the resin was so deep didn't really see them much in the end but it was interesting to see it um, I thought I would show you anyway now the, this resin because it was such a deep pour it actually uh, cured quite quickly at quite an alarming rate, rate actually. Um, so this is the finished cylinder for the lamp and you can see uh, all the little bits of handwork I did. I mean it still has a lovely shine about it. The the actual paints that I used, the spray paint, did, it leaves a sort of a kind of a different surface where the paint is but it's quite nice. And I will rub some resin over the top of this in the end, just lightly rub it over the top to make sure the paint doesn't come off. And um, I will also have to rub inside the cylinder because the mat, the rubber, the silicon mat that I used was was matte. It has a matte surface, so that means it will be matte on the other side of the resin. So I'll have to rub resin on the inside as well. Okay, now I've pulled out the the resin base, and it's interesting. See so how it sort of dropped to the the white dropped to the bottom and the edges of it as it was was curing and I could see it curing, curing while I was there in the room and it was actually moving away from the sides and it sort of got a lumpy uh, sort of a lumpy side which is to do with the rate of its curing I, I presume I mean I'd done a base before but it had never cured like that before so it must have been something to do with the heat and the, the type of pigments that I use so there this is what it's going to look like so I wanted to just see how it's going to look and I was pretty happy with that. So like I said, you could use a, a wooden base, it doesn't have. So weeks later when the, everything was cured properly, I asked my husband to, to put the electrical, to drill the holes for the electrical parts. Now he's using a drill with a 25mm spade drill, it's called. And this will be for the light fitting in the center of the base. So the first thing to do is to find the center of your base. Just measuring it. And then pierce, pierce a little hole so you know that that's the middle. And then drill, drill that shape you need for the electrical fitting. 
So this is so that the fitting will sit neatly in the middle and this is where you're going to put the hole for the electrical electrical wires. Make sure you're using a um, mask while you're doing this. This is resin. Resin dust is, is not great for your lungs. Now this is a drill bit that must be the same width of your electrical um, wiring. So it's got to be the same width as your, your electrical cord that you're going to use. So whatever that is. And now you've got to drill from the side all the way across to where you just build that hole. So it's got to meet up. So it's just it's making a small uh, point, starting, starting point for the drill. And now he's going to drill level straight across now this is not too, this wouldn't be too easy to do I'm glad I didn't have to do it and he had to drill straight across from the side straight across to that where he drilled before in the middle so this is where you're going to put the the cord that'll come out of the light fitting so you need a good steady hand to do this And, a, and the drill needs to be long enough as well. So it depends on what the width of your cord, electrical cord is, as to the size of the drill bit. See how it, it came through? So that's where the cord's going to come, come up the centre to the electrical appliance. So that's where it comes out, and that's where the, the, the light fitting will go. So this, this is the light fitting. So this is now, we've got to drill the holes for the light fitting. See, this is the light fitting that's going to go on top of that. And they're the, the screw holes that will hold the light fitting in. So Gary made a little template. So he measured where the holes were on the electrical appliance and then drilled through to the base so that they're in the right position. So when you screw that electrical appliance in to the base. So here I'm applying a layer of resin to protect the hand painting work that I did and at the same time I put a layer of this inside the lamp as well because this was on a cat mat and the surface of the mat is is not shiny so that means that the the underside of the lamp won't be shiny and it also won't be transparent so you need to put resin on the inside as well and the outside. Now these are the electrical uh, parts that you need to put together to make the lamp. Now I'm not going to show you how to do how to put this together because this is is something that should be done by a qualified electrician and I don't want anyone to attempt to do this on their own. So now, now what I'm doing is now all those parts have been put on and I am putting some super glue just on the bottom of the lamp part and then I'm going to line it up and where the join, the join of the lamp where I've overlapped the two ends, ends of the lamp, I line them up with the cord so, because that's the back of the lamp. So the part that you want to be at the back, you line it up with the cord and this is to hold it in place so that when I pour some resin around it, it won't move. So now I'm just putting another a layer of resin just as insurance to make sure that, that there's no movement of the top, top of the lamp. And I actually, you couldn't put some in the inside too if you want to. Um, you need to create a little wall for it. I did do that on um, some of, couple of lamps that I did. And now I'm just getting rid of the bubbles. As you can see, I, I masked off the electrical cord so there don't get any resin in the, in the hole or on the cord. And so this is it. It finished, the lamp finished. And it's, 
it's got a lovely transparency especially where those little acrylic diamonds are and where the resin is thin and you can see the little fish it sort of draws your eye all the way around the lamp and those lovely effects and there it's done and voila I was pretty pleased when I turned it on because you really don't know until you see what the lights, lights behind it is going to look like and you can see there was a real streakiness and that's because I actually moved I picked up that mat and moved the resin so it streaked through the different colors and it streaked through the clear resin that's why it's so important to put that clear resin into into the resin at the same time so that's what got that streaky um, effect and created those lovely light thin areas of resin so that you can actually see the light streaming through so I was pretty pleased and this is the finished product now I did a number of these lamps so this is the one I showed you in the demonstration and this is a larger one I did another lamp which was bigger it's, it's actually almost twice the size and I did this on a piece of plastic on top of it which was more difficult and this one is just the same technique except I bent the resin into a sort of an S shape and then I made a base for it and hand painted it and I put some little tiny battery powered lights behind it so it's a real fantasy. Now this is another version and this is a lamp I did for our, for our lounge room and it's got a beautiful glow to it and the base was sort of transparent part of it and so you could see the light glows through the bottom which I was pretty pleased with. This is another lamp I did a while ago and it was just a flat a large flat painting resin painting I did and I just heated it up and bent it into shape. Now for these lamps you don't necessarily have to use um, an electrical light to, um, to inside them you could use a battery powered light so you don't necessarily have to put wiring and things into the lamp so there's there's lots of things available that you can use as an alternative Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's inspired you to make your own little lamp. And um, please like and sus subscribe to my channel. And if you can spare a small donation to my channel, that is, is greatly appreciated and it will help me to buy more paints so I can continue to do these videos. Well, I will see you next time. See you later.